everyone. Leisha's here with us. Hello. Good to see you. Today, I've, this is something I've wanted to talk about for a long time. Uh, this is a mistake that beginners make, intermediate people make, even very advanced people make. And in business, it's not a good thing. Uh, and it exemplifies why it's important to think in English. What we're going to talk about today are called false cognates. Now, cognate is a word that has its base in Latin. Now, English was influenced by Latin, as was Spanish, certainly, Italian, French, most of West, Southwest Europe. So, there are many words in all of these languages that are spelled, sometimes even the same, have the same prefixes and suffixes, and look the same. So what happens, we assume that they mean the same thing. Yes. Assume, emphasis added. So to avoid misunderstanding, there are probably, we were looking today, what, about 100 cognates? Yeah, over 100. More than 100. Let's, I want to talk about the ones we hear mm -hmm. most often in classes to avoid misunderstanding because sometimes the difference in meaning can be different. Very important. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the Spanish word uh, contratar. Contratar. Now, I usually hear this. Uh, contratamos un nuevo vendedor. Contratamos un nuevo receptionista, okay? Now, in English, sometimes that will actually, usually, if you're talking about permanent employment, that's hire. We hired a new receptionist. We hired a new salesman. Now, what about Contratamos un carpintero. Contratamos un arquitecto. Now that's contract. I contracted a lawyer. I contracted a plumber. I contracted an electrician. That, in English, to contract means for a specific job, a specific project. Think about it like this, all of you accountants out there. When we hire somebody, we pay them with Nomina? Nomina. Okay, and we when we contract someone we pay they give us a recibo de honorario. That right? Honorarios, that's right. That's one way to remember. Okay. Um, here's another Alicia, example. Alicia, you explain this one. Okay. <laughs> I like your explanation. Asistir and assist. Yes, asistir in Spanish usually means to attend. But in English. Asistir una junta, asistir una fiesta, you know. Sí, exactamente, exactly. But in English, to assist, even though it sounds very similar to asistir, it actually means help, um, ayudar. So um, you might assist someone with their homework, for example. Or maybe if you buy a new car, they have, there's a, a ticket inside in case you have a flat tire, roadside assistance. Or if you go into a rest, uh, company, how may I assist you? That's right. Yes, a call for assistance or mm -hmm. an assistant, perhaps you've heard that. That could be like a secretary or an someone. An assistant is a helper. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so easy to get confused, but they have very different meanings. I'll be happy to attend your wedding. I'll be happy to attend your party. That's right. Okay. That's right. Um, All right, so there's another common one. I'll be 
happy to attend your party. That's right. Okay. That's right. Um, all right, so there's another common one we hear in classes all the time. Ah, this is one carpeta and carpet. What's the difference? In Spanish, we take the A off. Now, a carpeta is, well, in Monterey, sometimes we're modern and we say folded. Folded. That's right. <laughs> but that could be primarily a file, uh, a binder, which puts papers together, engor engargular. Engargulado, for example, or with those rings that open up and close. Yeah, that's called a binder. Now, a binder is also the word for a temporary insurance contract. For example, when you go buy car insurance on a Saturday and you pay the premium, the prima, you don't get an insurance policy, you get a binder, a temporary until Monday when they check your record, okay? Now, in English, a carpet, Alicia, I, uh -huh. you explain this. What is a carpet in English? Well, a carpet in English has absolutely nothing to do with a binder. It's, and it certainly isn't paper. No, and it's not paper. It's more like a rug, for example, or in Spanish, una alfombra. In, for example, in the United States, a lot of houses have maybe the entranceway with tile floor and then parts of the rest of the house have carpet or alfombra. Um, and it's usually, yeah, basically like a rug. Uh, or as we have here at Isa Business Center, it's very nice carpeting. But as you see, carpeta and carpet are two very different things. That's right. Okay. All right, move on. Okay. Well, this is complicated. Causalidad. Mira que causalidad. Yeah. Are you saying you no don't one's ever me? said that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So I guess now in Spanish, um, here's how we need to explain. Causalidad means can I write here? No. No. Coincidence. Coincidence. I'll put that in the in the text here when you see the video. A causalidad is a coincidence. Something that coincided. Okay. Now, if we say casualty, again, we can go back and relate to risk or insurance. A casualty, uh, an insurance policy can, can protect you against casualties such as, well, the word it would be siniestro, a fire, a car crash, someone getting sick, someone getting dying, uh, fire, tornado, hurricane, is a casualty or siniestro, but causalidad is like this. Yeah, kind of like a coincidence. A coincidence that wasn't expected to happen at the same time. That, that's right. It's completely different to, to the word casualty. Mm -hmm. casualty mm -hmm. in English. All right. Oh, oh this here's one line. of my favorites and they're very similar but with very different uses. Colegio and college. Lisa, oh, why don't you explain that one? I've heard it so many times and I've corrected people that there's a clear distinction. Well, in Spanish, colegio means a private school. 
So for younger children, mm -hmm. primary, secondary, maybe even high school. Right. It's a colegio, but I think main idea is it's private. Yes, as opposed to a public school, for example, uh, which might be an escuela. Mm -hmm. um, but in English, college sounds like colegio, but it actually means universidad. And I would imagine you would Universidad, probably... you know what? Another thing about the word college, oh. college also normally mm -hmm. implies that it's private. It's a private university or maybe a smaller university. That's true. Actually, college it's, uh, can be used in several ways. What would we call that, um, uh, the way the word sounds? It's uh, semantics. Ah, semantics. University right. sounds like this gigantic, impersonal place. But if you use the word college, it's generally smaller, usually private. Actually, sometimes the word college is even used for facultad. That was my next thought. You read my mind. Yeah. Oh, okay. For the example, college of law, the exactly. college of business, the college... Uh, engineering. The, okay. I went They're all, the, all maybe part of a university, but the college of whatever the... Economics. Economics. Facultad de Economia. Yeah. That's now, right. I went to Cleveland State University, which is a big university, the college of business. Ah, yes. Fac so, college can also mean... Universidad, or in some ways, facultad. facultad. Okay. That's right. So actually, even among English speakers, this can mean a different. Meaning. Um, okay. Well, we hope we cleared those up. We took the top. What was that? Seven mm -hmm. words. We will have more next week, we promise. There's over a hundred plus false cognates in English, but just to improve your speaking, make it sound more native. Uh, we'll be back next week. Enjoy your week. Happy.